The football department is led by John Kennedy, who's not just an outstanding person, outstanding coach, and an outstanding leader. That's the exact words of Ange Postacoglu as he was talking about John Kennedy. And we'll talk about him in just a second as he took, obviously, the media for Ange this week. And it was probably the right decision and I'm going to tell you why. On Loan Defender has been talking about his time at another club and he wants to basically make sure that Hearts suffer this weekend. And he's been talking about coming back to Celtic this summer. Celtic, obviously, it's been 20 years since Seville. We'll talk about that. The <laughs> same... Them across the roads have been talking about domination. We're talking about f being the biggest club and everything. And we're going to talk about a little bit about history. And we'll give you a little bit of a history lesson if you're being born in the 2000s because you won't know these stats. And this is stats that they like to forget. And then, um, obviously, this weekend, Celtic play with the National Famine Top, and you can get one of those. They will be auctioned. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But let's get to John Kennedy, first of all. John Kennedy has said that he was adamant that Celtic should be inspired and not intimidated by the return to the Champions League next season. When you look at the way that Manchester City dismantled Real Madrid, and yes, that Real Madrid team is coming to its, its, its end of its line, as you say. I mean, they're going to have big changes this summer. But when you look at the way that Celtic should be looking at the Champions League, and we'll talk about... The, the hope that we have for the Champions League. I mean, we should be looking to finish third in the Champions League. That should be the main aim. And then, because it's been 20 years since Seville, and people forget that we actually dropped down that year from the Champions League into the Europa. And then we went on a fantastic run to get to Seville. And talking about Seville, uh, Chris Sutton has been talking about it. And he says, he says, he's never stopped thinking about it. He says, visiting teams used to fear coming to Parkhead. And he thinks that Celtic should get back to that. He says, you couldn't ask for a tougher start to the Champions League last year. First game was against Real Madrid. He says, it was uh, Celtic played way, well. And you've got to remember that game. Celtic played fantastic the first half. You know, but then, obviously, Madrid just stepped up the level and then the rest was history. Leipzig des deserved to win in Glasgow. Shakhtar Donetsk outplayed them. Um, but going into the Champions League, when you look what Manchester City did, you know, I think that Celtic should be looking to bring back Fortress Parkhead. The way that it's cheat, it's, that they cheated Porto, I can't get over it. And when one of the binding moments for me is when every Celtic fan stayed to a man after the game and cheered the team as they picked up their medals. And then, I mean, let's face it, and then they all started chanting cheats, cheats, cheats for the way that Porto acted with that game and you know I think when you look back it was a fantastic achievement to get to 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 get to that final and the fact that we did drop down for the Champions League should be our aim that is our level let's not the way that the, the finances of the club no we're not going to talk about the size of the club and the, the fan base and everything else because that puts us up there at the highest highest level um, but when you look on a playing basis, we should be looking to compete at a decent level in the Europa. We should be looking to go into the Champions League and put in a good effort and either try and finish second or third and then drop down into the Europa. And Ange Postecoglou, we'll get back to him, because he says that um, the day-to-day -day running of the club and the way that the, the training operates, we're in a good place because we have John Kennedy there. And John Kennedy's been talking about the fact that and when you have 20 or 30 players coming from different parts of the world, different cultures, being able to cultivate them into one common purpose is a goal in itself. And Anz Postacoglu has been able to do that. He says that that's one of the biggest things that I've taken from all the managers that I've worked under is when you're able to bring players like that all together. And empathy, he says, Anz Postacoglu has a lot of empathy for the players and the players needs he says but as being number two he takes a lot of the flack that obviously anything that needs to be said then goes to the manager and then Ange Postecoglou knows everything that's going on talking about knowing everything that's going on Liam Scales loves playing for Aberdeen however with two years left on his contract he's adamant that he doesn't know what his future at Parkhead is and he doesn't know what the Parkhead club have planned for him it's understood that Aberdeen boss Barry Robson is keen on securing Scales for next season um, skills has been fantastic in defence for them. S skills wants to go to, uh, he wants to make sure that Hearts suffer this weekend 
a Twitch show that Aberdeen finished third. A lot of people are saying that Scales is better than Burnaby and they should have him back just for that alone. I think, um, you don't know, but Scales just has says that he's due back for pre-season training with Celtic and it's not until then that he'll find out what his future holds. So Ange Postacoglu has obviously just said to the players, it says, look, go enjoy your holiday, don't think about things and then um, have a break, come back fresh and then we'll talk about it. It says, Scales says, I will need to go back there and discuss what plans they have for me, says Liam Scales. I'm looking forward to taking a break in the summer. I don't think I'll be worrying too much while I'm off about what the future holds. That's Liam Scales talking about his time at Aberdeen and what holds for him next summer. Obviously, Aberdeen want to get him um, tied up after having him on loan. He's, he's been really good up there, but Celtic could really do with him. I don't know. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. <sighs> Let's talk about them, finally. So, they have a new CEO who's 38-year-old and he was the marketing director. And, you know, people say, oh, you're a Celtic channel talking about them. But they have done nothing but talk about us over the last couple of days. And Bosgrove was quick to stress how the Rangers have traditionally been the dominant force across Scotland across their 150 years apart from the 60s, the 70s, and the 1980s. In the 1980s, Rangers' average crowd, home crowd, was roughly around about 6,000 fans. And that's something that they tend not to talk about. Now, you can go back and check this yourself. You can go back and check attendances. Um, they weren't really a thing in the 80s. And they seem to think that they've always been this thing. The fact that they have the trophy hall of 117 trophies will be overtaken by Celtic next year, so they'll have to take down the the training club centre that proclaims that they're the most decorated club in Scotland. That'll be gone next season, we can guarantee that, because Celtic never stop. The fact that this 38-year-old who's um, come into the game, and it's, you feel old when you're talking about somebody like that is now, um, and especially at that level, you know, he's been at the club for three years, he was the commercial and marketing director and he now thinks that they have some right. He says, it's, it's <laughs> winning trophies. He says, that's what our fans expect. It's part of our history and part of our heri heritage. Have you ever heard a club that talks such nonsense where they say that winning is part of their heritage? It's, it's there's, there's no other, no club has a defined right to win things, you know, and you, you have to work at it. It's, you put, it's, it talks a good game. You know, we take nothing for granted that we're going to win, but we put ourselves in a position that if we do the work, and we do work hard enough as a club, you get into that position where you can win things. And we never, you never see anybody at Celtic saying that it's our right to, to win a treble, you know. The fact that we are going for another treble is testament to the transformation that Ange Postacoglu has done to this team. They, on the other hand, are miles, miles behind us when it comes to the financing of the club, to the, to the ongoing way that the club is run. Um, they are just miles behind on that aspect. So it'll be a good summer to see where they come in. It'll be a good summer to see. I hope Aberdeen spend money this summer and keep pushing up there. I hope Hearts will come back, but... Hearts will need to get up there. It's going to be an interesting summer in Scottish football. It's going to be interesting to see what the type of player that Ange Postacoglu brings in. There would have been a lot of speculation over Ange if he had done the media conference this week, especially the fact that he's put his 1.6 million house up for sale in Australia. There would have been the nonsense as well. Is he going to stay at Celtic? You know, what is your plans? What is your plans with DD? Was it in the speculation that he's going to leave Celtic and go down south will probably kick on in the next few weeks also. And But hopefully, like John Kennedy says, hopefully he'll be around for a long time to come yet. So on that note, it's been an interesting little video. I'm going to get ready. It's sunny today. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to head down to Paddy's Point. I'm going to watch the game and we'll see what some of the folk are saying down there. So on that note, I'll see you after the game today. Enjoy wherever you are around the world. Let roll up to the party, roll up, roll up to the party, roll up to the